by organizations in the Northeast. Mr. Chaudhary, uh, Dr. Sushila, and friends, I am privileged uh, to be here to speak on a topic which uh, concerns and worries all of us, and that is about India being in crisis. Crisis is not new to India. We have had many crises. Uh, we had a crisis in uh, the last one we had was 1990-91 and I know how touch and go it was because I was a minister at that time and we were able to introduce economic reforms which changed the course of Indian history and for 20 years we had very high growth rates and India was called as the new emerging global power etc etc. So that crisis produced uh, economic reforms. Similarly, we had the crisis on uh, in the China crisis in 1962 as a consequence of which our defense machinery was vastly improved. We had a crisis of food in 1965 which led to green revolution. So I find that every time we have had a crisis, uh, India comes out and in improved from that crisis. So if there is a crisis, if there is a crisis, I welcome it. I think crisis is good for India because we act only when there is a crisis, otherwise we don't act crisis. In 1977, we had an election. And I remember from 75 to 77 when I was struggling, fighting, I went abroad to campaign against it. Everybody said, this is a poor country, what people understand about democracy. If tomorrow Mrs. Gandhi holds an election, she will get landslide victory. 1977, she held an election. Her party not only lost, Mrs. Gandhi herself lost in Raibareli. That was the contribution of the people of India. So I think, uh, first of all, I would urge you that uh, any crisis comes, have a positive approach. Don't be, uh, don't be depressed what is happening to our country. We need to analyze and then go forward. The present crisis that nation is in is a different one from all the previous ones because it's a multiple crisis, it's not just one crisis. It's not economic crisis, defense crisis or uh, some political crisis, but it's all together. And so we now need to bring together ourselves together to find a solution to these crises, all these crises. And I think that if we do manage this time, then I don't think we will have a crisis for a long time. In fact, I think India will become a global power and a, a massive economic power if we solve this, this present crisis situation. Now, uh, what are the various dimensions of our crisis? The first crisis we have is a crisis which I mean... I mentioned this as the more Im most important crisis, although the newspapers may not reflect it. The most important crisis is the growing terrorism that the country faces. This is threatening your, exact, your existence. We have a Maoist terrorist uh, uh, um, movement. We have uh, an Islamic terrorist movement. We have um, uh, ethnic uh, terrorist movement in Northeast. We have uh, varieties of crises uh, of this kind. And people say that maybe in Punjab again there might be a flare up of crisis. So therefore we have all these crises and we have to deal with them now urgently. And uh, I think the most important of these crises, in the uh, most important dimension of this crisis is the Islamic uh, uh, terrorism. Islamic terrorism I say because they are fighting in the name of Islam. They don't want, uh, this is not that some separatist movement which wants to uh, separate some state from India. But this is a movement which says that India should be Islamized. India should become an Islamic country. And that is being stated formerly by Osama bin Laden, who said that 
India is an incomplete chapter of Islamic history. Now what did he mean by that? He meant that in India compared to other countries where Islam has invaded, there has been a difference. Iran was once ruled by Zoroastrians. They are fire worshippers. Islam invaded Iran, captured it, came, uh, became, came to power and then in 15 years Iran became completely Muslim, 100% Muslim. Neighboring country, Babylon, Mesopotamia, which is today known as uh, Iraq, Islam captured that country, Islamic forces, and in 17 years the uh, country of Iraq became 100% Muslim. Similarly, Egypt was conquered by Islamic forces, and in 21 years it became 100% Muslim. Europe was con conquered by Christians and in 50 years they made them 100% Muslim, uh, Christian. But in India, Muslims ruled this country for 800 years and Christians ruled this country for 200 years. Even then your country today is 83% Hindu. This is the incomplete chapter. <coughs> this is because every state there was some fighter who did not submit. Rana Pratap in Rajasthan, Kattabomman in Tamil Nadu, Rani Chennamma in Karnataka, against the British Rani Jhansi, Subhash Chandra Bose. Here of your, uh, uh, my, in your uh, state there were so many. The Vijayanagar Empire extended through this state. So, we kept fighting. Shivaji fought and got victory also. So, therefore, we kept on fighting and they never gave up and that's why Islam could not convert the Hindus to 100% uh, Muslim. Why we did not win? That is because we took time to learn the new methods of Islamic warfare. When uh, Islam did not come to India, our uh, rules of warfare were very civilized. And the ringmaster is Sonia Gandhi. So I am telling you that not having power is not enough. You must know how to use that power. You must have that, that guts to use that power. But unfortunately he has always been trained to say yes sir. And he is a very good yes sir man. The bureaucrat would have been wonderful. When I was minister, Chandrasekhar was prime minister, he was economic advisor to our government. Did very good work. But once he got this power of prime minister, now nah, he can't do anything. Everything is done by Sonia Gandhi who only wants money. She is now the fourth richest politician in the world. Very soon she is going to become the third richest because Mubarak is going to be sent to jail and all his money is going to be taken away. Then she will become the second richest. Then she will become the first richest. Then new government will come to India, she will become the zero richest in the world. All her money will be taken away. So that corruption can be solved. But we have to change our culture also. You know when I was a student and went to America, America to get a PhD, my classmate asked me, can you tell me why you Indians followed Mahatma Gandhi? I said, why? What's wrong with that? He said, the man doesn't wear clothes properly. He's half naked. How can you follow him? In our country, a leader must have suit, boot, uh, shining shoes. Then I thought about it. Yes, that is correct. Why we accept Mahatma Gandhi? Then what about our religious leaders? In Pope, if you see the Pope, he has satin gown. Diamond necklace, ruby necklace, sapphire necklace, his uh, cape has got full of jewels, all completely. Uh, same thing with the Imam in uh, Makkah. But our sadhus, Sri Sri Ravi Shankar or Swami Dayanand Saraswati or uh, um, uh, the Shankaracharyas, always ordinary Bhagwa. That was our culture. That money. Money will not decide how are you respected. 
money will not decide and making money will not make you happy that proof we got recently when the most well known actress of hollywood julia roberts came to india to do a shooting then she said i want to meet go to an ashram they took her and there she told the swami ji i have made billions of dollars but i am not happy what is the reason he said that it will take me 10 days of course i have to give you a 10 day course you have to stay here she said i will stay so first he taught her pranayam then he taught her yoga then he taught her bhagavad gita and finally some some lessons from upanishads and she was transformed she went back to america this is now i am talking one and a half years ago went back to america to hollywood called a press conference made her husband stand by her side and her two children and she said today onwards we all four have become hindus because that is the only way to become happy <coughs> america has now accepted yoga nasa has said that if you want to study artificial intelligence computers you have to learn sanskrit because the best language for computers is sanskrit we have forgotten for us it is communal sanskrit oh it is communal but there they are learning our philosophy of sanatan dharm to taught us yes material progress must be there and we made material progress but it also said that in society social status will not be decided by money it will be decided by sacrifice and knowledge and <laughs> and that's why our rishis are like that it was not by birth you say today i am a brahmin because my father mother is brahmin no that's not the correct definition read what rishi brigu said it is a discipline if you have knowledge but don't have weapons don't have uh, uh, money wealth don't have land then you qualify as brahmin provided you have got courage that was the condition that is why veda vyasa whose mother was a fisher woman became a maharishi because he had these qualifications valmiki was a dalit i mean he was born in a dalit family but then because he acquired these qualifications he became maharishi wrote the ramayan then kalidasa was going around the forest cutting trees he became a maharishi kavi of kavis vishwamitra was the son of kshatriya parents but he became rishi of rishis and brahman was not so about that we broke the law we forgave him ravan was a brahmin karna nidhi did not know this so he used to celebrate ravan leela one day i took kamban ramayan and showed him what are you doing this man is a brahmin he went to mansarovar and got a vara from lord shiva for a long time he didn't agree finally he agreed after that he has stopped uh, he has now stopped uh, holding ravan leela but he still doesn't like rama <coughs> keep saying bad things about rama one day he said swami says rama setu but ram built that statue setu which engineering college did he get a degree from that the name is ram setu next day he got ill and he went to hospital the hospital name was ramakrishna medical hospital or rather ramachandra medical hospital at least ramachandra has got an mbbs let us be happy about that so sir uh, i i i would say in the time available to me that we have today only a leadership crisis because over the years we have been told play safe don't stand up and if anyone stands up discourage him when i was fighting the emergency people said the same thing how will this emergency go poor people don't know any democracy why are you wasting time go and live in america but i said no i will fight i don't know they used to ask how will there is the language they have driven away 5 lakh hindus from kashmir what should we do well the answer is that we can't ask these kashmiri pandits to go back because they will be killed there 
So instead what we should do, we have 1 crore X servicemen. Select 10 lakhs of them. Many of them are still fighting fit. Give them money and give them weapons and say go and settle down in Kashmir. And from these Kashmiri Pandits you take their home address because now it is occupied by militants. So you go and vacate those houses. The army is there to help you. And say that if the Jammu Kashmir Chief Minister complains that Article 370 would be disturbed by it, then you tell him that Article 370 was brought so that the religious composition of Kashmir is not disturbed. That's what Jawaharlal Nehru said. But the militants have disturbed it by driving away the Hindus from, uh, from Kashmir. And when uh, everything settles down, those Kashmiri Pandits will go and we will call back all our ex-servicemen. And now we have got a very, very able, honest, upright ex-serviceman who has retired on the 1st of June. His name is V.K. Singh. We should put him in charge of this operation. Then I like to see why 10 lakhs instead of 5 lakhs? Because we have to tell the militants, you send one, we will send first time two. If you send two, we will send ten. And ultimately we will take over Kashmir. That is the language terrorists understand. We are complaining that Bangladesh is sending infiltrators into India. 33% of Bangladesh population come into India. They are living in Assam, Bengal. And no you saying put the BSF, more BSF, they will all be bribed. They are all getting bribed. No you saying put a, uh, uh, a fence because the tender for the, uh, uh, for the fence is also corrupted and uh, instead of putting steel fence, they put iron fence and that it can be cut very easily. So what we should do if we had a good government? We should tell Bangladeshis that Pakistan was created of which Bangladesh was a part at that time for those Muslims who can't live with Hindus who don't want to live with Hindus now after getting Pakistan your Muslims have come to live with the Hindus in our country so therefore if 33% has come from Bangladesh to India either you take them back or give us one third of Bangladesh territory for us in India. And if you draw a line in the map from Silet to Khulna, the land above that line is one third of Bangladesh. The military people are very happy with this because that now they have to go around uh, Bangladesh and there is a small thin strip which is called Chicken Neck where China is above, Bangladesh is below and then connect to Assam. Any time it can be cut off. Nasam can be cut off. So if you get this part, you will be secure. It requires willpower. That is what Mr. Padmanabhaya was saying. How do you restore this will? It can be done, <coughs> but it requires willpower. Look at what the Americans have done. They waited and waited for Osama bin Laden, found him, they went inside his house and killed him. We did not do it for Prabhakaran. <coughs> In the case of Prabhakaran, Rajiv Gandhi's widow was saying, please let him go, let him go. She even sent her daughter to meet uh, one of the killers of her husband. Now, I don't know how this is possible. No Indian widow will ever send her daughter to meet the killer of her husband. Maybe in Italy they allow that. So I would say retaliation is the only answer for terrorists and that retaliation has to be on the basis of their objectives, not killing more terrorists, that's not enough, new terrorists will come up. Find out what their objective is. They want Darul Islam which means 100% Muslim, then put, uh, put Hindus there. And I can tell you, wherever Muslims are in majority, 
Muhammad has told them, then that is Darul Islam. There is no room for minorities. In Saudi Arabia, which is Darul Islam, can you build a temple? No. Can you celebrate Diwali? No. Can you put Ramchandra Ji's photo in your pocket? No. Can you have Satyanarayan Puja inside your house? No. And the punishment is very severe if you do it. Now can we tell our Muslims in this country that because Saudi Arabia you can't build temples therefore you can't build masjids here? Similarly, Saudi Arabia they demolish masjids on a daily basis to build roads. I was surprised to hear this. Because in, in Makkah there, is a, there was a masjid called Bilal Masjid where uh, Muhammad used to read namaz. So one day the Saudi Arabian government decided the king when he goes to Makkah, he should have a palace. So they demolished that masjid and built a palace. So some archaeologists said at least this masjid you should not de uh, have demolished. So the Saudi Arabian government issued an official note. Masjid is not a religious place, it's a building to read namaz. And if you say that because Muhammad read the Nimas there, therefore it should not be demolished, then it means that you are doing Murti Puja, which is not acceptable in Islam. And we did the correct thing by demolishing it. Now supposing I say here, Masjid is only a building to read Namaz. So we will build one for you across Saryu river in Ayodhya. Let Ram and the Mandir be there. Will our Muslims agree? They will agree, but uh, our secular leaders will not agree. <laughs> Most problem with the Hindu, our uh, Muslim thing, situation, question is that it is our people, the Hindu people, whose mind is confused. The Muslim will adjust. For instance, in this country, if I want uniform civil court, can I give you uniform civil court? No. In Australia, Muslims accept civil, uh, civil code. One day one Imam said a public statement that uh, if the Australian government can please give us separate uh, civil code, we'll be happy. So the Prime Minister of Australia was a woman. She said if you want Sharia, a separate civil code, then please find another country because Australia will not give it to you. Next day, Next day, all Muslim organizations issued a statement that this, ma, this uh, mullah is a mad fellow. We are happy with uniform civil code and we will never ask for a separate code. In, this is Australia. Same thing in America. Why? Because Muhammad said, if the majority is united against you, surrender. That is called al taqiyya So I don't blame Muslim. Their mind is clear. If you are a rasgulla, they will push you. But if you are strong, they will adjust with you. I say to Muslims, you are our brothers and sisters if you accept that your ancestors are Hindus. What is the difficulty? Otherwise, what you are saying? You are uh, Gauri and Ghazni's uh, children. Then, have your blood tested? DNA? I have done the tests of blood. I have read, uh, read research articles published in the University of London, in uh, Cambridge University. What does it say? Muslim blood and Hindu blood has the same DNA structure. I will tell you one thing more. Brahmin blood and scheduled caste blood also has the same DNA structure. <laughs> North Indian blood and South Indian blood also has the same, the, uh, same DNA structure. We are one people. The British have uh, filled your brain with Aryans and Dravidians and all this nonsense. In fact, when Raj Thakare was making statements that the, uh, these UP taxi drivers are taking away the employment of all us Marathis, I asked a friend, you know Raj Thakare, why don't you get me a sample of his hair? Because even DNA can be found out from hair. So he said, yeah, I go to the same hairdressing saloon as him. Next time he goes for haircut, I'll give you a hair sample of his. So I got his hair sample. Then I gave 10 rupees to a UP taxi wala. He gave me his hair, hair sample. 
So I had it tested in Hyderabad. You have a laboratory here. And I found that the DNA of both Raj Thakre and the UP taxi wala is the same. And I went and announced it in a press conference. I said this Raj Thakre is also come from UP. So let him also go away to UP. He is not a Marathi. Otherwise prove it that your DNA is different. So this, all these differences have been created to weaken you. So I am telling you that the way to deal with a population which is fighting you on the basis of religion is to make it very clear that you are on our terms. This country is Hindustan, which means Hindus plus those other Muslims and Christians who accept that their ancestors are Hindus. Then they become part of my family. But if you don't accept it, then we created Pakistan for you. Why you want to live in this country? We will give you a one-way ticket, you go there. Why was Pakistan created? Only for those Muslims who cannot live with Hindus. So you are separate, then you go there. But if you are with us, then you may accept what is the truth, that your ancestors and my ancestors are the same. So this is the one way to solve the problem of our terrorism. Take a tough line, find out what their objectives are, and retaliate, retaliate on that basis, as I give you the examples. If Pakistan attacks you, go and bomb their camps. We know where those camps are. But our ministers cannot do it. Why? Because they are laundering their black money by Hawala route. Hawala route means through Dubai. Dubai means you cannot do any business in Dubai without informing ISI of Pakistan. I am sure that you will agree. And uh, uh, not because you, you have also done it through Dubai, but because you are a Home Secretary and a very upright, honest uh, Home Secretary. Nothing in Dubai can be done without Pakistan knowing. So today Pakistan knows which minister has how much money deposited when in which bank in, in Europe. And therefore we don't have guts. Abzal Guru Hanging? No. Something or the other gets postponed. Kasab lives on tandoori chicken. He says that my life is more comfortable in India, so I would prefer to live in India now. And in jail even better. This is lack of guts that has been bred into our system. Negotiate. If there is a terrorist attack, government must not say shanti shanti. But instead tell Pakistan, hand over our, your people or we'll bomb you. Americans are doing it all the time. Make friends, make friends with the Israelis, make friends with the Americans. And today because Western China is having Muslim Islamic terrorist problem, China is also ready to cooperate on that. If necessary, if Pakistan, I'm afraid what is going to happen in Pakistan, please understand. It is going to be now taken over by Taliban. Afghanistan will also be taken by Taliban. And then war with you will come because of them. Better get ready. Don't say peace, peace, peace. Look at the fact that we are negotiating on Siachin. Pakistan is not in Siachin. They are on the ground. We are on the top. And Pakistan says, let us both demilitarize. Of course, it's easy for them to demilitarize. They are downstairs. We are sitting on the top. How can we give that up? But the government is negotiating. So this is the first thing I would like to say. Second crisis we have. Uh, <coughs> and that is corruption. Corruption has now reached such an extent that you can, if you stop it, you don't have to pay taxes in our country. What is the total tax bill of our central budget? Almost 5 lakh crore rupees is the total tax collected by the government of India. How much is the black money in foreign bank accounts? 70 lakh crore rupees. So if you bring that back, you will have 14 years of zero taxes. 
And can you bring it back? Of course you can bring it back. What do you have to do? Government issues an ordinance. All accounts, all accounts of Indian citizens in 77 countries which are secret banking are hereby nationalized. They have become government property. If any Indian citizen can prove that his account was legally opened, the money is legally put there, we will defreeze and give it back to him. Under the United Nations Resolution of 2005, this is now legal, we can do it. And if we uh, today issue that ordinance, tomorrow we will get 70 lakh crores back. Similarly, if we want to raise money from the country, auction the spectrum. Today, how much we are going to get by this new? Earlier on, they sold it for 14,000 crores, the whole spectrum. Then I went to Supreme Court and said, cancel it. Cancel all the licenses. Supreme Court has cancelled the licenses and said, have auction. Now they are going to have auction. It's of 14,000 crores, they are going to get 4 lakh crores from the auction. <laughs> Cancel all the coal mining uh, licenses. Auction it. How much will you get? 10 lakh crore rupees. Similarly, uh, set the price on market level for Krishna Godavari Basin oil. How much will you get? 16 lakh crore rupees. There is a shortage of money. So there is plenty of money if you want it. If you get a tough government. Of course if you go tomorrow in election and start voting, I am a reddy, I am a kama, I am this, I am that. And or somebody has given me a bottle of uh, scotch whiskey and therefore I am going to vote for him. Then of course you have no hope. Vote like the Tamilians. This time Karna Nidhi gave 6,000 rupees per vote. People took the 6,000 rupees and voted against him. That way you do. So there is no shortage of money. All this inflation and uh, uh, rising property price, all got to do with black money. Can we stop black money? Of course we can stop black money. My difference with Anna Azar is this. Anna Azar says, no, Jan Lokpal bill comes then only. No, I say, this present law you can do. But you must understand the subject. 2G spectrum. Nobody could understand what 2G spectrum is. What is this G? G means what? Well, somebody asked Manmohan Singh, what is 2G? He says, Sonia G, Rahul G. <laughs> so, but spectrum, because you see, when uh, cordless phone came, all you could do is dial. And the other person would, without wireless, you would pick up the phone and he could hear you. That was called 1G. G money generation, PD. First generation is cordless phone. Second generation is mobile phone. You can phone, you can send email, you can send SMS, you can send picture. That is second generation. Third generation, you can send, uh, uh, you can make a phone call, you can send EMS, uh, email, you can send SMS, you can send picture and you can send video of yourself phoning. You phone, the other chap picks up, you can see him, he can see you. 4G, fourth generation. You can send 10,000 pages of documents by mobile phone alone. So, all these are distinguished by waves, the first wave 1G is like that, second has more cycles, third has even more cycles, fourth has even more cycles. You have to divide the sky and the division of the sky is called spectrum. And that is what is, in 2001 we were having only 4 crores mobile sets. In 2008 when Raja announced that he will give it at 2001 prices. We had 70 crore mobile sets and the price of spectrum was 10 times the price of 2001. And therefore Raja sold it to companies which didn't deserve to get it. 
they then having got the license they went and sold it to foreigners at eight times the price and without doing any work just getting spectrum and selling it they got thousands and thousands of crores and uh, we lost 1,76,000 crores these foreign companies were very happy so they gave a big bribe to Raja Raja got 60,000 crore rupees as bribe but he was a clever fellow he said no I can't keep all this myself I have to distribute so he kept for himself only 4,000 crores only 4,000 crores then he gave Karunanidhi 15,000 crores because Karunanidhi is party president he made him minister and Karunanidhi has three wives so you have to give a little more <laughs> he gave 36,000 crores to Sonia Gandhi because without her okay this could not have been done because at one stage Prime Minister said auction it Raja said no 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 I am not going to auction it you mind your business because Sonia Gandhi told him don't worry he is just a you know, he's just there passing time in the PM's office. People ask me, how can Mr. Manmohan Singh with sitting on the such a powerful chair, chair, how can he not use that power? He can finish Sonia Gandhi in one minute. Well, I say, have you been to a circus? There, there will be one big cage, five lions inside it, one lean, thin, Ringmaster will come with a whip and he'll crack the whip and he'll say climb up to all these five lions. Each of the lions is strong enough just with their paw to knock him dead, leave alone biting him to death. But they'll all obey and climb up on the chair, on the, on the bench. Why? Because when they are small, they've been trained that way. So, same thing. In, uh, in Sanskrit we call lions as Singh. So our Manmohan Singh is also a circus lion. And the ringmaster is Sonia Gandhi. So I am telling you that not having power is not enough. You must know how to use that power. You must have that, that guts to use that power. But unfortunately he has always been trained to say yes sir. And he is a very good yes sir man. The bureaucrat would have been wonderful. When I was minister, Chandrasekhar was prime minister, he was economic advisor to our government. Did very good work. But once he got this power of prime minister, now nah, I can't do anything. Everything is done by Sonia Gandhi who only wants money. She is now the fourth richest politician in the world. Very soon she is going to become the third richest because Mubarak is going to be sent to jail and all his money is going to be taken away. Then she will become the second richest. Then she will become the first richest. Then new government will come to India. She will become the zero richest in the world. All her money will be taken away. So that corruption can be solved. But we have to change our culture also. You know when I was a student and went to America, America to get a PhD. My classmate asked me. Can you tell me why you Indians followed Mahatma Gandhi? I said why? What's wrong with that? He said, the man doesn't wear clothes properly. He's half naked. How can you follow him? In our country, a leader must have suit, boot, uh, shining shoes. Then I thought about it. Yes, that is correct. Why we accept Mahatma Gandhi? Then what about our religious leaders? In Pope, if you see the Pope, he has satin gown, diamond necklace, ruby necklace, sapphire necklace. His uh, cape has got full of jewels. All completely, same thing with the Imam in uh, Makkah. But our sadhus, Sri Sri Ravi Shankar or Swami Dayanand Saraswati or uh, uh, the Shankaracharyas, all this ordinary Bhagwa. That was our culture. That money, money will not decide how are you respected. Money will not decide. And making money will not make you happy. That proof we got recently when the most well-known actress of Hollywood, Julia Roberts, came to India to do a shooting. Then she said, I want to meet, go to an ashram. They took her. 
and there she told the swami ji i have made billions of dollars but i am not happy what is the reason he said that it will take me 10 days of course i have to give you a 10 day course you have to stay here she said i will stay so first he taught her pranayam then he taught her yoga then he taught her bhagavad gita and finally some some lessons from upanishads and she was transformed she went back to america this is now i am talking one and a half years ago went back to america to hollywood called a press conference made her husband stand by her side and her two children and she said today onwards we all four have become hindus because that is the only way to become happy <laughs> america has now accepted yoga nasa has said that if you want to study artificial intelligence computers you have to learn sanskrit because the best language for computers is sanskrit we have forgotten for us it is communal sanskrit oh it is communal but there they are learning our philosophy of sanatan dharma to taught us yes material progress must be there and we made material progress but it also said that in society social status will not be decided by money it will be decided by sacrifice and knowledge and and that's why our rishis are like that and it was not by birth you say today i am a brahmin because my father mother is brahmin no that's not the correct definition read what rishi brigu said it is a discipline if you have knowledge but don't have weapons don't have uh, uh, money wealth don't have land then you qualify as brahmin provided you have got courage that was the condition that is why veda vyasa whose mother was a fisher woman became a maharishi because he had these qualifications valmiki was a dalit i mean he was born in a dalit family but then because he acquired these qualifications he became maharishi wrote the ramayana then kalidasa was going around the forest cutting trees he became a maharishi kavi of kavis vishwamitra was the son of kshatriya parents but he became rishi of rishis and brahman was not so about that we broke the law we forgave him ravan was a brahmin karna nidhi did not know this so he used to celebrate ravan leela one day i took kamban ramayana and showed him what are you doing this man is a brahmin he went to mansarovar and got a vara from lord shiva for a long time he didn't agree finally he agreed after that he has stopped uh, he has now stopped uh, holding ravan leela but he still doesn't like rama <coughs> keep saying bad things about rama one day he said swami says rama setu what ram built that statue setu which engineering college did he get a degree from that the name is ram setu next day he got ill and he went to hospital the hospital name was ramakrishna medical hospital or rather ramachandra medical hospital at least ramachandra has got an mbbs let us be happy about that <laughs> so sir uh, i i i would say in the time available to me that we have today only a leadership crisis because over the years we have been told play safe don't stand up and if anyone stands up discourage him when i was fighting the emergency people said the same thing how will this emergency go poor people don't know any democracy why are you wasting time go and live in america but i said no i will fight i don't know they used to ask how will the emergency go i said i don't know but i'll fight well, how did the emergency go indira gandhi one day declared election and she lost the election and emergency went away so i never knew in advance that indira gandhi is going to declare election and then she is going to lose that election so we don't know what all will happen we have to do the right thing as lord krishna said in bhagavad gita the fruits of it will come in what form who can say so we have to have a leadership which takes risk 
and that only can come if you elect people properly. Everybody is critical of Ma Mulayam Singh because he says he is doing vote, vote bank politics. Mulayam Singh is a very old friend of mine, I asked him and I must say he has shown courage so far, he has now supported Abdul Kalam. <laughs> Mamta is also supported. Of course in our country you see in the Brahma's cabinet the three most important portfolios held by education by Saraswati, defense by Durga, finance by Lakshmi. Men have got nothing. Uh, uh, men have got nothing. Only Narad Muni has got uh, rumor spreading uh, activities. So there has been a tradition of Mamta Energy acting tough, I am not surprised. Jailers are acting tough, I am not surprised. So we are today only our mental makeup should be not that of a lion of a circus. Just because we are 100 million pe billion people doesn't mean anything. 1000 goats in one place, one tiger comes, all the goats will run away. Majority is with goats. One tiger, all will run away. People call me one man army. Why others uh, run away from me, I don't know. Because it's psychology. The British has ruined your psychology. That has got to change. We have to t d decide. Not nothing will happen. No change. Yes, change will come. We want change. We'll work for change. We'll look for change. But we'll never give up. That attitude need to have. I'm sure change is coming. I'm expecting end of July the next president to be Abdul Kalam. <laughs> then, end of August, parliament will convene. There will be a vote of no confidence. This government will go. <laughs> Elections will take place in November. New government will come. Well, we don't know. That is up uh, up there. Prarabdha. Have you heard the English, Sanskrit word prarabdha? I don't know whose destiny it is. But uh, we will get a new government. We will have to go through a war. I'm telling you, the war with Pakistan is certain. And if you have got a result, we'll make Pakistan into four Pakistans. That is the strength we have. But the people must have self-confidence. Don't bother, oh, what is this country going to? Where are we? Everything is so bad. No, you will get the opportunity. Utilize it. We have come through all crises in the past. This country will again come through this crisis and go on to become a developed country world. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Swami. One of the best speeches ever delivered in the recent times. Unfortunately, Dr. Swami has to catch a flight now. He has to go to Chennai. Thank you. Thank you. Please be seated. There shall be a short question and answer session. Questions asked by you will be fielded by Dr. Hanuman Chaudhary and Dr. Pat Mr. Padmanabha. No, questions will be taken by Dr. Chaudhary will take the questions. Dr. Chaudhary and Mr. Padmanabhaya will take the questions fielded by the audience. Please be seated. And another applause to Dr. Swami. He has to leave for Chennai tonight. We apologize on behalf of Pragna Bharti for the inconvenience caused to those who are standing in the allies and some scores of them waiting outside and those maintaining the hall tell me that it has been a long time they are seeing this type of crowd some of us volunteers will go to the hall and distribute slips please put your questions on the slips 
and Dr. Chaudhary and uh, Mr. Padmana will answer those queries by you. Some, some announcement please by NEPA. Namaste everyone. Singing sensation Hema Chandra performing for a YFS.